Good day, fellow investors. Well, here we are, the most expected value investing event of the year, Warren Buffett's shareholder meeting. This year, a little bit shorter, online, but still always great topics to discuss, to analyze, and to see how to apply them to our own investing long-term strategy. If you're a long-term investor, please click like, comment below, share this video. We're going to dig into the topics now. Enjoy. So online version of the Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meetings this week and Becky Quick was asking the question so it was much more efficient than it usually is. Warren Buffett answering the question directly, efficiently and in four hours he did much more than usually in even six hours. So let's go over the topics. The structure of the meeting was made in four parts. So his presentation, his discussion about America, investing in America, not betting against America, touch on earnings, selling aircrafts, his loss on aircrafts, just a sh formal meeting, the formal part of the meeting, and then questions by Becky Quick, Quick that he, she got from the public and online. So let's immediately start with his presentation. He created slides and he discussed, okay, how to invest in the current situation with the coronavirus crisis. He called the crisis an interruption in growth. So just an interruption and that over the long term, economy will grow, America will become a better and better country and you have to believe in the economic future of the country and that he has passed a lot of crises from the Second World War, Cuban Missile Crisis, 9-11-2009 and the American magic will prevail. He used a lot of examples how the age of the United States is just 241 years, the combined ages of Charlie Munger and himself 185 and just look at what happened in three normal human ages from a population of 3.9 million in 1790 of which 0 0.6 million were slaves so from that to what happened today what is america today the most powerful economy in the world in just 231 years then a lot of interesting slides with historical data from the wealth of the country discussing the Louisiana purchase, the return on the Louisiana purchase, how big was the return, how big was the wealth created there and then comparing to the COVID crisis how 16 million males there were in 1861 and 6% of that group was killed in the civil war that lasted five years that would be to today's equivalent of 4 million people dying. He compared the crisis with the flu in Omaha, the Spanish flu 100 years ago, how that was deadlier than the current COVID crisis. So there will always be interruptions when it comes to the economy, life, that's simply life, but you have to believe in the future and you'll do well also through investing and through economic growth. Then talking more specific about stocks, he said from his birthday, the Dow Jones average was 381 points. Then it declined 48% to 198 points. Then it went up to 240 points and nobody was really expecting a great depression, but then it went down again to 41 points. So from 381 points, 198, 240, 41 points when Warren Buffett was born in the few years after he was born. But again, people survived that, invested, and even if it took more than 20 years to break even if you bought stocks when Warren Buffett was, was born still you could have done well but simply investing through time and also taking care of those dividends that were coming and something very peculiar 25 years later from the peak in 1929 a commission was set up to investigate whether the market is too hot in 1955 and Benjamin Graham testified I think it was Congress testifying that the stock market is high, but not as high as it looks. And the rest is history since then. Since then, $1 invested would have been 100 times that initial investment. And that stocks, 
The stock market, yes, is high, but it might not be as high as it looks, is what Warren Buffett is saying. And later he also discusses interest rates and we'll touch on that and how that affects stock prices. So his conclusion on his presentation is never ever bet against America because that's not a smart thing to do, especially in the long term and that people are innovative, there will be interruptions, that's normal, but the long term strategy, the long term trend is pretty clear. And then on why invest in stocks, comparing stocks with equities, the 30 year treasury, you're practically losing money. He explained how if you lend money to the government at 1.5 with 2% inflation, you're practically losing money. So stocks are a better long term investment than lending money to the government. Now, for example, as long as those are an investment, not a speculation. So if you invest in an index like the S&P 500, you own a cross section of America and you can forget about it. The only problems can arise if you use leverage, if you use psychology, if you have the wrong psychology, then you sell at the wrong time, you panic, you listen to the news, you listen to the irrational market giving you constantly a lower and lower price, then you sell at the wrong moment in time, instead of investing in businesses, when you buy a farm, you buy to produce food, you don't focus on the price of the farm every day. And he said they will continue to buy businesses. On earnings, the earnings currently are not important because A, we don't know the consequences of the current situation on future earnings, so it's not really comparable. B, the 50 billion loss was an accounting loss okay because they have to account for the changes in the stock prices it can change again in the next quarters and then he discussed how 124 billion in cash is not really 40 percent of the stock market portfolio in cash it's far less than that around 20 percent when you calculate all the values of all the businesses in the berkshire holding. So don't think that Buffett is sitting on that much cash. He doesn't think he's sitting on that much cash. And he said that if a deal comes off around 50, 60 billion, he would take it. So let's say he's sitting on 50, 60 billion of available cash, not that more. And even if it all put together 124 billion, we are at 20% of the portfolio. He has discussed how Berkshire will always be a financial fortress. That's why they have so much cash on the balance sheet. And he praised also Powell for the fast reaction with the Fed, the speed and determination they have showed. A whatever it takes mentality started by Mario Draghi in Europe, now copied by the Fed. And the, on the consequences of the money printing, he says that what would be the consequences of doing not, nothing is the best question. Now. He sold, he closed all his airline positions. So he owned four of the biggest, largest American airlines and he sold everything. They spent around 8 billion to own those top four stocks. They sold at a loss. And he says that he was clearly wrong about airlines. Airline business changed in a major way and uh, they had all to borrow 10 billion, the time for them even if peak business is there to repay those 10 billions will be very long and very painful. And he doesn't know whether three years from now, how many people will fly and that's not clear to him. And there are too many planes. And if it's just 80% of the current flying numbers, it's not enough to justify the investments in the new planes in the growth. And this will cost Berkshire money, but it's his mistake. And actually, if you think about it, he, since ever he has been against airlines because there's no competitive advantage and now he is he found himself unfortunately due to this situation right again and lost money in airlines but they closed everything closed the position and took the loss so very interesting how even warren buffett the long-term investor is selling when it simply doesn't show like a smart investment now, a formal part, just quickly discussing some proposals, denying the proposal of a mixed board, etc. So we can immediately go to the 
questions and then again on airlines so explaining how it's not good on 80 percent of prior traffic so he sold and the airlines will be really hurt and this was something very interesting he discussed how only big companies were somewhere where he could put his money into owning maximum 10 percent so if you think at the market capitalization of delta airlines he can own only 10 percent on 20 30 billion that's the limitation he has with investing so to, for buffett to invest in something the company should be at least 30 40 billion in market capitalization which eliminates a lot of things where we as individual investors can look at then there was a question should we buy stocks now when he's sitting on so much cash and then he re reiterates himself it's not a large cash position in case of worst case insurance scenario he needs to have a lot of cash and it's about the psychology of investing versus speculation whether you should invest or not if you're buying businesses and you don't have to account for that money in the medium short term then you have nothing to fear and he never felt financial fear that's what made him a great investor and if you invest now in stocks it will work out well over the next 20 30 years but don't ask him how it will work out over the next one year two years three years then he also discussed money how there is no shortage of money in the market like it has been the case in 2008 2009 therefore we are not seeing the convertible investments eight of them that he did back then with the bank of america goldman sachs etc there was short period with panic in the markets in march but that when that froze but the fed acted promptly and he has no idea what will happen next but he says they borrowed money and it's a good time to borrow money because of the very low interest rates and if we look at the 30-year fixed rate mortgage average which is something more peculiar for personal borrowing of money the interest rate on that is very very low on the question of performance how berkshire underperformed the s p 500 over the last 5 10 and 15 years he says that on one hand yes size makes it difficult and there is no guarantee about future performance but he has 99 percent of his money in berkshire and then there are also advantages for example nobody can do what berkshire can do in energy in insurance nobody can shuffle the money depending on where it's most needed where is the re highest return on capital depending on the holding company that berkshire has then on oil it doesn't work at 20 dollars a barrel production will be down and there is a lot of oil in storage and it will take some time to clear out so we might see lower prices for longer and therefore there is a risk of permanent losses of capital from oil companies to affecting even the banks that are lending to those oil companies and bad debt in energy loans if that happens then equity will be wiped out so that's a risk of investing in oil he knew about that he knows about that and it's all about the oil the price of oil and he doesn't know where it will go long term on the question of breaking up berkshire he says that it will be a high tax endeavor that it elim eliminates the possibility to move capital around his capital allocation that is one of the best berkshire advantages of course also discusses wall street doesn't get fees if nothing happens like it is the case with berkshire on interest rates he says that there is more money printing and negative interest rates or low interest rates and he has to see it to believe it that it will not affect inflation somewhere in the future he doesn't see negative interest rates and more debt for eternity he was wrong 10 years ago he might be wrong now but he is now really saying how we are testing the question with much more force now the most interesting question in economics how come we have such low zero interest rates negative interest rates and no inflation so he is looking at the answer he doesn't have the answer but he is ready for anything and they also discussed pricing power of their businesses like the railroad like the energy businesses that will do good in an inflationary environment a question was 
related on the government, US government defaulting because of the huge debt. And he simply said that can't be happening because the government owns the printing press. And if you own the printing press, you cannot default and how the debt will just grow, grow and grow. And it's not a concern because they are borrowing in their own currency. Therefore, no default. The currency my addition is can lose value, real purchasing power, but that's a different story. And then the most interesting question answered at the end on buybacks, how, okay, if you need the money to keep growing as company, then it's not intelligent to do buybacks. You have to buy only below what the business is worth. And then he says how saying like, okay, we as a company are going to do five or 10 billion in buybacks over the next year is insane it's crazy because then you are not thinking about the most important things when it comes to buybacks which is price at some price it does pay to do buybacks at some it doesn't but as you announce it to the market then that's not really sane and then if some companies do stupid financial engineering to do buybacks to leverage the maximum out of their balance sheet he was practically referring to here to Boeing that is something that he says it's stupid I hope you enjoyed the summary if you really enjoyed this mindset Buffett's investing mindset this is the channel to subscribe to so please subscribe click that like button if you don't like this video change your taste click that like like button thank you for watching looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video